Hey everybody, welcome back. We are now turning to the concept of elasticity, okay? And there's gonna have a little, like six, seven, eight, probably eight videos on elasticity to master it, but this is the first one, and therefore it's the most important one. So definitely watch all of this. First thing I want you to understand is elasticity is a general concept, okay? There's many different types of elasticity measurements. In fact, there's probably an infinite number of types of elasticity measurements. However, there are certain ones in economics that you're always introduced to first. In fact, the one that almost everybody is introduced to, the very first one they're introduced to, is price elasticity of demand, and that's what we're going to do too. So we've got introduction to the to the general concept of elasticity, and then a specific type of elasticity measurement, price elasticity of demand. I guarantee you your pre professor is doing the same thing. They're starting with PED, and your book did the same thing. It started with PED. Everybody who's introduced to elasticity is introduced to this measurement first. But let's talk about this general measurement first. Elasticity is a measurement of responsiveness, okay? Responsiveness of a dependent variable to an independent variable. Now don't hit stop on your video right now, okay? I know some of you guys hate dependent and independent, but it's not so bad. In fact, it's going to help you out. Let me just write it on the board really quickly, okay? What we're looking at is a percent change in some dependent variable with respect to a percent change in an independent variable. That is the general formula for all, for every single elasticity measurement you ever get. And if you embrace this, you can be asked for any elasticity measurement, price elasticity of demand, which we're gonna do, or cross price elasticity of demand, or income elasticity of demand, or price elasticity of supply, or tons of other ones, and we don't have to freak out like, what's the formula? Because we're not like memorizing it. We understand the general concept is just looking at how responsive a dependent variable is to a percent change in an independent variable. Now, if the percent change in the dependent is quite large in respect to the percent change in the independent, we're gonna say it's responsive, okay? The dependent variable is responding a lot to some small change, let's say, in the percent change in the independent. Now, if this value up here, the percent change in the dependent is quite small relative to this, so this changes a lot, independent changes a lot, we get a very small percent change here, relatively speaking, we're gonna say it's inelastic, it's not, really, not responsive. So what do we mean by inelastic, not responsive? The dependent is not responding much to a fairly large change in the independent, okay? Straightforward, but important. Now, first one, like I said, that almost all of us are introduced to is price elasticity of demand. I just wanna show you, now there's a cool way kinda of to represent this, but here at Econ Busters, we're not focused on being cool, but elasticity of demand with respect to price. So some of you guys will see it written like that, like an E right there. Elasticity of demand with respect to price. That's one other way to write it. I just go with the common PED, price elasticity of demand. So what is the dependent variable? Quantity demanded, right? Quantity demanded is dependent upon the price, right? So knowing that, we're never gonna miss this formula, percent change QD over percent change price, right? The dependent variable is QD, the independent variable is price. There we go, percent change of QD or percent change of price. If the percent change of price is small and the percent change of QD is large, hey, that's elastic, right? If the percent change in price is relatively large with respect to the percent change of QD, meaning this doesn't change very much with respect to that, we're gonna say inelastic, not very responsive. Now, just before we close out this first video, I wanna, of course, get a little graphical with you. Got two graphs up here, okay? This rather flat demand curve, that is more elastic, okay? And we're gonna see that in a second. And the steeper we draw the demand curve, the more inelastic. Now I'm trying to be precise, okay? So I went ahead and I put some price points, okay? Price points exactly proportional to each other. So the percent change in price is the exact same in both graphs, okay? I want you to see that. So price goes up, price goes up. So we're looking at the same range of prices. And we wanna talk about the elasticity. We'll take a look at this. P0, so this was our Q0. Price goes up to P1. The quantity's changing significant, right? Q1, like I said, this more flat curve, more elastic, okay? 
QD is responding significantly to the price change, okay? The dependent variable is uh, responding significantly to the change in the independent variable. And I really should say percent change. It's always key to say percent changes, okay? Because elasticity is not slope. Now that's another video, but just wanna throw that in there right now. So the percent change in the QD, pretty big to the percent change in price. Now, same percent change in price as this one. Same absolute change and same percent change, okay? Now, QD, P0, hit the demand curve right there. That's my original QD or Q0 at price one, Q1. Take a look at that. The quantity demanded did not change all that much. The percent change was pretty small in relation to the percent change in price. The steeper the demand curve over the same price range, Okay, the steeper the demand curve over actually an equivalent percent change in price, if we really want to be exact, okay, over an equivalent percent change in price. It doesn't have to be the over the exact price range, but over an equivalent percent change in price, to be very precise right there, the steeper demand curve, more inelastic, okay? So, anyhow, that's simply an introduction. General concept of elasticity. We understand this general formula. It's gonna help us with all future formulas and just understanding the concept in general. Today we talked about, or this video, we're talking about PED. We see it graphically, flatter, more elastic, steeper, more inelastic. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.